so thank you. So with that, we knew as movie makers wanting to tell this story that it was time, that it was God's time when not just the U.S., but many other cultures, many other countries. For example, in the Philippines, it's um, illegal. It's never been legal. But we know that as time goes by, there's more and more pressure politically to make abortion legal. And we're not stupid. You're not stupid. Everyone knows that abortion is happening illegally. Back alley abortions, illegal abortions. Okay, so we want to ex expose the truth about this topic so that politicians, the people, can see for the first time on the big screen what abortion really does to the, to the baby, to the mother, to the father, to the community, to the society, how it impacts us in a very, very negative way. So that's why we as filmmakers wanted to make this movie and make sure that we were doing it in God's time. That is really the essence of proper timing there. Yeah, we can't make it up. There's so many stories, you know, uh, as to um, why this is the time for this movie to be revealed to the people. That is quite an introduction. I'm sure everyone in the room has has questions. I would like to open the floors with the questions from the media. Is there anyone who wants to go first? All right. Um, hi, I'm John from uh, Komakawa.com. Uh, I'm a blogger. Um, first off, just talking about this is uh, pretty hard, um, especially in like a Catholic uh, country such as the Philippines. Um, do you think the term pro-choice Oh, there it is. Sorry about that. Yeah, the term for choice more. is uh, much of like uh, masking it. I do because if you've ever heard Lila Rose from Live Action, who uh, she works with the UN, she says if we're talking about being pro-choice, what is the choice? Well, the choice is ultimately to take an innocent life, and it is choosing one life over over another. So I, I do agree with you. I think that the word itself, it does just mask the reality of what that choice is. If you're going to talk about pro-choice, then what's the choice? Yeah. Um, what do you think are, like, um, of course, aside from the baby, there's also the plight of the mothers that we have to also worry about. What's the choice of the mother going to be well, if, if it's like, of course, outlawed in the U.S.? Are there choices? I think that, like I said, a choice to take another life is never a human right. I don't have the right to end your life. And I think that the same with life within the womb. Every life has a purpose. And it is, it is a miracle, essentially, when a life is created. It doesn't just happen easily. And so when we talk about choices, I, I never think that a socioeconomic reason for ending a pregnancy is acceptable. Um, a lot of people would argue that if someone has a, more than one child that they can't provide for that child if they were to have another one, that, that is not a valid reason to end a life. If you are living in a poor area, it's the same thing with a homeless person. I shouldn't be able to go say, well, you're homeless, you're not contributing to society, so we're going to end your life. Uh, and then a lot of people will say, well, what about the health of the mother? What about medical circumstances that might make this pregnancy dangerous for the mother? And we, also, what about yeah, sexual but, abuse? Okay, the same with that. First, let me talk about something that might endanger another's life. Mm -hmm. We had the opportunity to work with a former abortion doctor who was in the movie. His name is Dr. Anthony Levitino. He performed the late-term abortion, and he saw over thousands of abortion procedures. In his career that lasted over a decade, he will testify that there is never a medical reason for an abortion. There is the necessity to induce labor or to perform a cesarean, 
but there was never a medical reason to perform an abortion that ends the life of that child intentionally. So that's the medical um, analysis of that. And then when we talk about sexual abuse or rape, that is a very sensitive topic. There are two crimes that happen so. The first one is a crime against the mother. She has been sexually assaulted. But a crime against the mother does not validate a crime against a child. This crime is one that people would argue she should have the right to terminate the pregnancy. But that is an ending a life. We are giving someone a reason to commit another crime on top of an already heinous crime. I believe that rapists should be prosecuted, prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. But I don't think that an innocent child should be held accountable for the crimes committed by the father. None of us are so privileged as to choose who our parents are. You brought up the uh, question about Catholic uh, Christian perspective in, yes. in an island uh, in a country such as the Philippines. Uh, very, very important, of course. 86% of this nation identifies as being uh, Catholic Christian. And um, we as Catholic Christians believe that um, life begins at the moment of conception and that life is to be respected from the moment of conception to natural death. Well, of course, there is now that spiritual aspect that needs to be taken uh, into consideration because we are spiritual beings, all of us, every one of us. Okay, so therefore, if you are approaching this with a spiritual um, approach, you're going to be convicted, of course, and you're going to need to pray. You're going to need to go deep. You're going to go uh, to realize this child is a human being, okay, from the moment of conception. So, in the matter of choice, Who's going to stand up for the choice of this baby? It's not, in my word, a fetus. It's a baby. It's a child. And there is that spiritual element that I don't want us to, to forget here in this conversation. Um, it's not easy because everyone is not approaching things with a spiritual perspective necessarily, right? In, in this culture, it's certainly in the United States, where abortion has been um, you know, legal since 1973, um, it's not approached with a spiritual attitude. But here, of course, I know that it is. And um, I know for us as filmmakers, it also has been approached in that way. So when you see the movie Unplanned, it's, it's no secret that it's a faith-based approach towards the topic of abortion. Yet, we're telling the, the true story of a woman who comes from a Christian pro-life household, okay? And something like 63% of abortions that take place in the United States, where 3,000 babies are aborted every single day, 3,000 a day that are documented that we know about, okay, um, come from pro-life Christian homes. So there's that element of taboo, that element of uh, shame, okay? Um, and that's a very big problem, okay? We shouldn't be shamed because there was an unplanned pregnancy, okay? Certainly, back to the issue of rape, I have a dear friend, Pam Stenzel, pamstenzel.com. And Pam uh, is a pro-life speaker. She speaks to half a million students every year face-to-face -face in schools and conferences and young people rallies. And she asks the questions about abortion and uh, she'll ask certain situations of abortion. And when she gets to rape, Okay, she saves it till late to last. Almost every hand goes up when she asks the question, do you think it's okay to abort in the matter of rape? And just about at this point, every student's hand goes up. And now they love her, and it brings them to tears when she says, well, I want you to know that my father is a rapist. And at 15 years old, my mother was raped. But instead of having an abortion, she believed that I was a baby and not just a fetus and that I was to be put into adoption. And at that point, boy, this is my friend. Imagine if she asked me that question and I said to her, it's okay to, to abort you because you're a victim of a child of rape? No, and for her to look, look me in the eye and say, my father is a rapist, okay? But I'm a happy, happy human being. And I don't know what we would do without that in my life. She's a dear, dear friend. I just want to add statistically too, in the U.S., the situations that we're talking about are less than 3% of abortions. 
So if we're gonna address abortion, we should be talking about 97% of that number because these are very rare circumstances. And the point also is that either it is a baby all of the time or it is a baby none of the time. So in a situation of rape, like you're talking about, it's a baby still. And if you have the position that you're pro-life, you can't say that you're pro-life and not agree that a child of rape is still a child. Yeah, I just want to move on, but one last thing with choice. Convenience and choice go hand in hand, okay? So really, the altar of convenience is the altar of choice, you know, in so many ways. So to, to not forget that, folks, when we're talking about choice, we're, we're talking about how easy it is to make a choice, in, you know, how convenient it is for us. We like choices. We like convenience, okay? But we're not called necessarily to be people of comfort. We're called to be people of challenge, you know? So that's just where we're coming from with this film as well. Next question from someone? Hi, my name is Ed. Hi, my name is Ed, sir. I'm a Baby Broadcaster, safe and blogger. And I was one to train, but uh, I just like to ask, how do you go about explaining? Uh, because I think it's uh, it's clear and easy to actually explain this to the Philippines, to the Filipinos, because we're mostly Catholics, and, and uh, we share the same kind of uh, faith, and and um, also pastor pro life. But uh, in that sense, how do you explain uh, abortion to people who have no morals, who have no faith? The opposite. I mean, I, I would just like to see your perspective on that. My pro-life stance, although I am a Christian, is rooted in science. Because science does back the pro-life stance in the sense that we know a human life is created at the moment of conception. At fertilization, a unique, a unique individual with its own set of DNA is created. So when you start talking to people who are pro-choice or who don't um, recognize that that life is created um, in the sanctity of life, in a sense, then you have to approach it from a scientific point where you explain, this is what science proves. So regardless of where you stand in your faith, science says this is when a human life begins. You don't have to necessarily shock them, like, you know, show a lot of blood. So yeah. Know. This is what, this is how it kills women who don't, uh, you know, who don't actually understand what they're going through until after the abortion is done. That's all. I want to add to that too, that because so many people have no idea what happens during abortion procedure, and that's part of what Unplanned is doing, is it's going behind the scenes and it is showing, not to the fullest extent graphically, but you do see the ultrasound during the abortion procedure, and most people do not realize that this is a child that is being ripped apart. It's a great question. It's a difficult question. Yeah, I know. But, but science and religion should complement one another and not argue and not fight. So your, your response absolutely is perfect, it's spot on. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Hi, I'm from Rachel Berry, that's a Catholic radio station here in the Philippines. Uh, my question is uh, for ma'am and uh, Please share with us your personal experience of the, how this movie ch 